All right, boys and girls. So we're going to finish our lesson. And we stopped at question 13. It says, use what you learned about the relationship between cups and quarts to complete the table below. So remember, when we converted cups to quarts, we had to divide. And then the method that we used was fractions. So we know that it takes four cups in order to make one quart. So I'm going to write my fraction above so we can solve our first two boxes and then you'll do the other two on your own. So as stated in the previous video, when we write our fraction to divide from cups to quarts, I'm going to put the amount of cups that I have been given as my numerator. So I've been given two cups and I know that there are four cups in one quart. So four is always gonna be my denominator. So now I can simplify two fourths and I know that I can divide two fourths evenly by two to simplify my fraction. So if I would divide it two divided by two, I will get one. And if I divide four by two, I would get two. So my answer will be one half. So in this first box, I know that one half quarts or 0.5 quarts, 0 0.5 quarts, which is the same as one half, is equivalent to two cups. So you can either write 0 0.5, you can write 0 0.5, or you can write one half, whichever you choose. Write that down in your box at this time. Now let's move our way to the next area in our table. So I know that one quart is equivalent to four cups. Now I have five cups, so I need to identify and figure out how many quarts are equivalent to five cups. So again, we're going to divide, we're gonna take the amount of cups given, which is five, that's gonna be our numerator. It takes four cups to make one quart, so four cups is gonna be our denominator always. So this is an improper fraction. So this is an improper fraction. So I need to change this to a mixed number. So I know four goes into five one time and I have one left over and my denominator stays the same. So one and one fourth quarts is equivalent to five cups. So in this space above five, you're going to write one and one fourth cups. Now on your own, you're gonna press pause and you're gonna work out the next two blank spaces in the table on your own. So for your answers, you should have had two and one fourth is equivalent to nine cups and three and three fourths quarts is equivalent to 15 cups. Let's move on to question 14. One gallon is equivalent to eight pints. Describe how to convert from pints to gallons. So we know that pints is going to be the smaller unit and we're taking our smaller unit and converting it to a larger unit. So I know that I must divide. How will I divide if I know that one gallon is equivalent to eight pints? Describe how to convert from pints to gallons. Write your explanation down in the space below Press pause and do it at this time. So be sure that your response is written in completed sentences. I know pints are a smaller unit of measurement. To convert pints to gallons, I must divide by eight. And boys and girls, make sure you're writing this down in your packet and or on a piece of scratch paper. Let's move on to 15. So now we're gonna use what we just learned about converting measurement units to solve these problems. Make sure you are showing your work on a separate sheet of paper. 15 tells us there are 1,000 milliliters in a liter. How many liters are in 100 milliliters? So I'm gonna pull up our anchor chart and I want you to take this time to look at the anchor chart to the right. So our anchor chart is here to the right. So I see that there are 1,000 milliliters in one liter. 
So our leader is our base unit. So that's going to be up here in blue. So I have to go down one, two, three stairs to get to milliliters, which means that's equivalent to a thousand. So we're going to find out how many liters are in a hundred milliliters. So if I'm starting at milliliters, I need to go back up my stairs. So if I'm looking at my anchor chart, if I go up the stairs, it shows that I'm going to divide. And I need to divide by what? I need to divide by a thousand. So on your scratch paper, go ahead and we're going to divide 100 milliliters by 1,000 in order for us to find out how many liters there are. Do that, press pause, and do that at this time. So I can simply find my answer by moving my decimal. So if I'm starting with 100 milliliters, I already know my decimal is always going to be behind the ones place value. So it's always going to be right here. Now I'm going to move it three places to the right. One, two, three. Three, I'm going to leave my decimal there. So that means my answer will be 0.1 liter. So that means there, in every 100 milliliters, there is 0.1 liters. So in your space right here, you're going to put 0 0.1 liter. For 16, one yard is equivalent to three feet. How many yards? are equivalent to 25 feet. Now for this one, we are not working with a base unit of 10. So we need to use a fraction in order to solve this. So press pause and on your own and on your scratch paper, solve this problem. All right, boys and girls. So the answer that you should have gotten is eight and one third. Why? Because our fraction that we would have written is 25 over 3. We're dividing 25 by 3 in order to find how many yards are equivalent to 25 feet. So we've been given 25 feet, and we know that there are 3 feet in 1 yard. So 3 feet will be our denominator. So 3 goes into 25 8 times. 3 times 8 is 24. But our numerator is 25. We have 1 left over, and our denominator stays the same. So eight and one third will be your answer. So at this time, you will complete the rest of the packet on your own. That will be pages 218 through 221. Do that on your own and make sure that you replay this video and the previous video as much as needed to refresh on your skills. Have a good day, boys and girls.